Welcome to example program. In this video, we will see how we can write a C sharp program to find the factorial of a number using recursive method. Factorial of a non negative integer, let's say n, we denote it by using this symbol and we call it as n factorial, is the multiplication of all integers less than or equal to n, which is nothing but n factorial equal to n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 multiplied by n minus 3 up to 1. So for example, if we have the number 4, then 4 factorial equal to 4 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1. And here if we look at this, then we can write 4 factorial as 4 multiplied by 3 factorial. And we can write this 3 factorial as 3 multiplied by 2 factorial and we can write this 2 factorial as 2 multiplied by 1 factorial. Now one more thing that you have to remember and that is 0 factorial is equal to 1, 1 factorial is equal to 1. Now let us see how we can write the C sharp program to do this. I have already made a video where I have explained this program using the iterative process. In this video we will see how we can do this by using a recursive method. We are using this system namespace and then we have created a namespace called as factorial and then we have this class program and inside this class program we have this static void main method which is the entry point of our program. Now here inside this class let's create another method which will be a recursive method which will find the factorial. This will be a static method and this method will return integer type and we will call it as factorial you guys can give any name and it will take one parameter that is the number for which we want to find the factorial and i'm going to call it as n a recursive method is a method which calls itself directly or indirectly in a recursive method we need to have a condition where the recursive call will stop otherwise our program will crash so now when we talk about the program to write the factorial of a number, we can say that we can stop finding the factorial when we reach the number one because we know that for the number one, the factorial is one. So one factorial equal to one and zero factorial is also equal to one. So we can stop checking for factorial when we reach this number one. So in our program, we will have a condition and that is we will check the value of this n variable we will check whether it is containing one or less than one we're going to check whether it is one or zero so i'm going to write the condition in here as if n is containing a value which is less than or equal to one in that case we will know the factorial value so we will return one if n is greater than one then we have to find the factorial and we already know that uh, if we have the number let's say 3 then 3 factorial is actually equal to 3 multiplied by 2 factorial. So if we have the value of this 2 factorial then we can easily uh, calculate the value of the 3 factorial just by multiplying 3 with the value of this 2 factorial. So here if n is greater than 1 then we can say that the factorial of n is equal to n multiplied by factorial of n minus 1. So if we have the factorial value of n minus 1 then we can easily calculate the factorial value of n. So here in our program we will write that we will perform n multiplied by factorial of n minus 1 and what we're gonna do is we're gonna return this value. So for the number n the factorial value is n multiplied by the factorial of the n minus 1. And here since we are calling this function which is the factorial it will be a recursive call and again here it will calculate the factorial of this n minus 1 and it will go to n minus 2 n minus 3 up until it reaches 1 and after that we get the factorial value now here we will uh, write the main function first and after that I will explain how this program will work so in our program let us first declare the variables that we are going to use now I'm in the static void main method and I'm going to take integer types of variables and the first variable I'm going to call it as number and in this variable we will store the uh, number entered by the user for finding the factorial and we need another variable for storing the factorial value that we are going to calculate 
and I'm going to call it as result. Here, since I'm taking this integer type, the number that we can enter for finding the factorial has to be a smaller number. If we enter a larger number, then the factorial value will be a huge number and any of the basic data types available can't hold the factorial values. So we need to enter smaller numbers in here. And uh, after that, we will ask the user to enter the number. So I'm going to use the console.writeLine method and I'm going to write the message as enter a non-negative number. By seeing this message, the user is going to enter the number and we will read that by using console.readLine method. And this readLine method will read the user input in string form. So if the user is going to enter the number 4, then this read line method will read that as a string value 4. So we have to convert that number 4 from string form to integer form and we can do that by writing convert dot to int 32 method and after converting we will store the number in the number variable. Now we have the number for which we can uh, find the factorial value. Now the next thing that we do is we will call the factorial method so we will write factorial and we will pass the number that the user has entered which is present in this number variable now this factorial function will calculate the factorial value and it will return that and we will store that value in our result variable here now the next thing that we do is we will print out the factorial value that we have found so here i'm gonna write console dot write line and here we will format the string so we will use a couple of placeholder so factorial equal to another placeholder and then we need to provide the value for these placeholders which are from number and result variable okay now we have uh, written the program in here let us see how this will work here let's assume that the user is going to enter the number four so user wants to find the factorial for the number four. So we are calling this factorial function and we are passing this number variables value, which will be four. So the factorial function will be called with a number four. So this n variable here will get four. And first, this if condition will be checked. Whether n is containing a value less than or equal to one, no, n is containing four, which is not less than or equal to one. So this return statement will not be executed. So then we come to this statement and here we have return n multiplied by factorial. I'm going to write only fact here factorial of n minus one. So n is containing four. So n minus one is three. So here we are calling this factorial function again. So we will come back in here. So it will be factorial and three this time. So here now again, this condition will be checked whether 3 is less than or equal to 1, no. So this return statement will not be executed. So we come to this statement. And here we have return n multiplied by factorial of n minus 1. So it will be 3 multiplied by factorial of 3 minus 1, which will be 2. Now here, if you look at this, then we are calling the factorial function again with the value of 2. So this function will be called again. So it will be factorial 2 and again, this condition will be checked and uh, it will be false because 2 is not less than or equal to 1. So it will not execute this uh, return statement. So we come back to this one here and here we have return 2 multiplied by and again factorial of 2 minus 1 which will be 1. So now we are calling this factorial function again. So it will be factorial function and this time with a value of 1. So now here this condition will be checked this time n will get 1 so whether 1 is less than or equal to 1 which is true so this statement will be executed return 1 so it will return 1 so this factorial function which gets this 1 will return this 1 to its caller which is this factorial function with a value of 2 so here we get 2 multiplied by factorial of 1 which is 1 so it will be 2 and it will return this 2 to its caller which is this factorial function which has the value 3. So it will be 3 multiplied by factorial of 2 which is 2 
it will become 6 and it will return that to its caller which is this function. So it will be 4 multiplied by factorial of 3 which is 6 which is 24 and this 24 will be returned here. So that return value will, will be stored in this result variable. So the result variable will get 24. So when we print this one, we get 4 factorial equal to 24. Okay, now uh, let's run this program and let's see the output. Enter a non-negative number. I'm going to enter 4 and it says 4 factorial equal to 24. Now I want you to make a simple change to this program and that is here in this program we are not checking for the negative numbers. Of course we are asking the user to enter a non-negative number but the user can enter anything. So I want you to check for the negative numbers in here and I want you to display the appropriate message if the user is going to enter the negative number. After making the modification, post your code in the comment section. If you like this video, then hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. And if you want to say something, write that in the comment box. For more tutorials like this, do subscribe to the channel. If you think this video will help any of your friends, then uh, do share this video with them and help us to reach more people. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later in the next video.